Hi, uh, today we're going to be talking about um, the, well, what I think is a pretty good solution to a uh, problem or a question that uh, I see online a lot, um, which is uh, how to get started in Eurorack or modular synthesis um, on a budget, because uh, anyone who starts looking into this stuff is going to see pretty quick that it's really expensive. Um, and I only just very recently got into it myself, but I feel like I did a pretty good job not spending too much money. And the, the main thing that enabled me to do that was uh, these chromatic modules uh, from Dreadbox. And uh, I wanted to buy them all, but, um, and two of this one, but I, you know, I don't think that's uh, necessarily... Uh, the way that everybody should go, and it's not necessary to do that unless you really want to. Um, what you what you really would need to get is uh, just to get started with kind of a basic setup is three of them, and those are the ones that I'm going to talk about today. And they're a hundred bucks each. Um, they are the Hysteria Performance VCO, the Ataxio Dual Modulator, and the Eudaimonia uh, Filter. It's also Mixer and VCA. And for this is going to be kind of a basic video where I just show up how to set up a basic sound engine uh, with these things. Um, and hopefully, uh, uh, you know, you'll, if you don't know how any of this stuff works, you'll, you'll leave with some understanding of, of how to do it. Uh, what I have here, uh, Besides the modules um, that we're talking about is a rack brute case from Arturia. And then um, out of frame here, kind of inconvenient to show on camera, is the Arturia key step, which is a pretty uh, common uh, kind of uh, controller for, for synths, basically. Um, so we're going to go ahead and start with uh, the first module here, um, which is the hysteria. Okay, so this is going to be your sound source, and what we're going to do is just see what happens when we plug the output of that into uh, a mixer, or in this case, I've got a headphone out module. Uh, in this case, I wouldn't plug this directly into headphones. I bet it would be pr pretty loud um, or pretty quiet. I don't know. I haven't tried. Um, plug it into something with a volume knob, you know. And, and see what happens first. So this is the sound of the oscillator um, going just directly into the headphone output here uh, in the rack. And what we've got down here is a couple knobs for different stuff. So we've got uh, oct, which is an octave knob, which is a coarse tuning. The semi uh, slider, which is the uh, fine tuning for semitones. We have a waveform selector with a picture of all the different possible waveforms. And we have a pulse width uh, on the far right knob here. Okay, so if you see if we change the course tuning, you get a variety of different pitches, you know, up to pretty high. And the fine tuning. also have uh, different waveforms, you know, and some of them, the ones that uh, don't have this dot, have pulse width that you can change as well. Let's pick one that sounds cool. That sounds pretty nice. Alright, we'll do that. Okay, oh, we also have this quantize button here, and what that's going to do is it's going to fix the uh, slider position basically to uh, discrete octaves or semitones. So now when we change it, it does that. And so, you know, you can play whatever note, whatever octave, just by moving the sliders like that, and it'll just drone out like that forever. Okay. 
that's your basic sound source, uh, the hysteria. So let's unplug that. Okay. Oh, well, and let's say we want to uh, control that now, uh, not with the sliders, but with a keyboard. In this case, the key step, I've got a cable here that is hooked up to the uh, pitch output on the back of the key step. And we're gonna plug that into the one volt per octave input on the hysteria. And now we'll go, we'll plug that output back in. And so now when I press a key on the keyboard, it'll change the pitch. And I can change the octaves on the keyboard. I can do whatever I want on the keyboard. Okay? So that's cool, but you can see that still the sound, you know, will just drone out up there forever. And we don't want that. Well, you, you might want it, but I don't want it. So we're going to change it a little bit here. Okay, so the way we're going to do that is instead of sending the output directly to our uh, sort of line out or a headphone jack or whatever, we're going to send it first to, uh, let's get a shorter cable. We're going to send it first to our filter over here. It's okay, so this is the Unimonia has these three mixer inputs with uh, dedicated uh, level knobs. So we'll just send it into the close one here because it's convenient. Okay. And then we'll send the uh, output of the filter into our headphones. And now you can see that there's no sound. And the reason for that is, well, twofold here. One is that the filter is all the way closed. So we'll open up the low pass filter there. And two is that the VCA, which is the voltage controlled amplifier, is all the way off. And if we turn that up, basically functions as a volume knob now, okay? So we can modulate that, all right? And so that's fine, but it's kind of what we had going on before. We can just, let's listen to it here really quick for a bit so you just hear the filter. Um, it's a low-pass filter. If you turn it down, it kind of takes out some of that buzz. Here's the high pass filter, which will eliminate the low end. And you've got resonance here. Which works better when the filter is down a bit. Okay. So a couple of things going on in that filter. Okay. But what we want to do really to have a working kind of piano-esque setup here is to use the dual modulator here to control the value of the VCA, all right? And what we're, how we're gonna do that is by patching the output of the modulator into the VCA CV, which is the control voltage input for the VCA. And basically when this jack receives voltage, it will modulate the, posi the position of this knob. All right. And in order to send that signal, we have to trigger the modulator. So there's a trigger input here on the modulator. And what we're going to do that with is the gate output of the key step. We're going to plug that right in there. Okay. And what the gate output is, is that basically, uh, Anytime a key is pressed on the key step, it will open up the gate and send a uh, voltage to the gate output that tells this trigger to go off. Okay, gates and triggers are distinct things uh, in modular, but you can basically think of, the, in this case, they function the same way, um, which is to just send a signal to tell the ataxia to do its modulation. Okay, so now well, let's look at the sliders here for the ataxia. So there's an attack, uh, decay, sustain, and then uh, this is the release slider, but it's also the uh, like the function shape slider that has a couple of different shapes. So between uh, linear, uh, exponential, and logarithmic, um, 
we'll just go ahead and put out an exponential here for a second. And what we're going to, basically what these do is, uh, the attack is going to be the length of time that it takes for the modulation to come up. The decay is the length of time for it to come down. And, and on this particular uh, modulator, sustain is a set length of value time. Um, so we're, let's just start with, start with decay because it's pretty easy to illustrate. So if we turn it up a little bit here. Okay. Okay. So as we turn that up, the length of time for the sound to kind of, for the, for the VCA value to die off is going to be longer and longer. So at maximum decay, that's so pretty long. Okay, but shorter decays, it's, you know, shorter. Down to little just clicks. Okay, we'll just leave it up here. And the attack makes it take longer to come up. Okay, so we'll just leave it like this. Okay, nice plucky sound. All right, and so basically what that's doing is it's, when I press a key on the key step, it is raising the value of the VCA uh, in correspondence with the shape of the sliders that I've set here, okay? Um, all right, so now we have a, you know, working setup. So what I'm gonna do is just set the uh, arpeggiator on the key step to play an arpeggio. Okay, so it's just gonna play that forever. And if we change these sliders, You can see how that changes things. Okay, change the shape. Okay, and also if we go back over here. You know, a pretty wide range of possible sounds. And that's how you set up a basic kind of sound engine uh, with these three modules. Um, we're just going to do one more thing here, which is to use the second channel on the Ataxia. So that is a, well, it can either be set up as another um, sort of triggered modulator like this, or it can be set up as a LFO. And so we'll just, to change to that, we just press this button. And this one now. And now it's going to be sending, you know, a signal basically to this output. And the LFO one can run without a, a, any kind of trigger. It'll just loop over and over again. So we'll do... And basically the way the controls work on that is there's like a rise value, a fall value. The sustain doesn't do anything if it's not being triggered. Um, and then you have a shape for the LFO. So we'll, let's do linear here. And let's get it kind of on a sort of long pulsing up and down. And then this is the like... Uh, a kind of like an attenuator knob that controls like the strength of the output. So it's, it's just like max output here to no output here. Okay. And we can use this to modulate whatever we want. Anything that has a CV input. Um, so why don't we send it to uh, the octaves. So we can do that. We can send it to semitones. And send it to the waveform. We can send it to pulse width. Oh, 
Uh, we can send it to the filter cutoff. send it to the value of the first trigger that we set up. So, you know, that's kind of what that's kind of what you're paying for here, right? With with the modular setup is a busy the ability to do all this kind of stuff. I'll just leave it over there. Um, so, yeah, I think these are some pretty good modules. Um, they're pretty straightforward to use. I think, you know, for me coming into this, not knowing anything, I was able to figure them out pretty quick, but I know there's a lot of, I see a lot of questions online, like, oh, how do I get started? What do I do? Um, and people will recommend, you know, VCV rack or, you know, modular grid and, you know, websites like that to look at stuff and, and test things out, uh, especially in the case of VCV rack, but it's a little bit different when you get your hands on the, the actual equipment and it can be a little confusing and, um, you know, hopefully this helps to clarify like what some of these basic types of modules do um, and how to set them up to get something that works. Um, you know, it's not going to be as cost effective as just buying a, you know, built kind of desktop synth or uh, even a semi-modular uh, Synth, there's a lot of them, uh, and they seem pretty great and pretty affordable um, for what they do. Um, but you know, part of the charm here is being able to do things exactly the way that you want, um, to mix and match stuff exactly the way that you want. And uh, once you start looking into the module prices, you'll see that um, things can get pretty out of hand pretty quick. You know, a lot of the popular modules that people recommend a lot online um, are going to run you, you know, 300 to 500 bucks for just the one module, and it's not going to give you what you need to, you know, get a basic synth sound out of it. So for 300 bucks altogether, for total for three modules, I think it's pretty good to be able to get uh, basic synth sounds out. Um, you know, you still have to buy the case. In this case, the Rack Brute was uh, about 260 bucks. Um, and you'll need other stuff too, like the, your controller and whatever, but you're gonna need that stuff, you know, no matter what you do a lot of the time. Um, so it's just kind of uh, part of the cost of getting started. But, you know, to be able to, to basically have a functioning setup, uh, you know, for, 600, 650 bucks once you once you factor in uh, the cost of the modules, the case, and some kind of controller. That's not too bad. Um, so yeah. Anyway, uh, let me know what you think in the comments, and if you want to see any videos uh, either more in depth on these modules or uh, some of the other ones, uh, which are also a lot of fun. Uh, let me know, and I'll make some videos. Okay. Bye.